when I saw this equation, I knew that you couldn't solve it using conventional means, so I decided to give it a try and I got the answer, so I wanted to share it with you. So first of all, for this equation to hold true, x must be positive and greater than zero. Because as you can see, if x is negative, then the left hand side will be positive, while the right hand side would be negative. For example, if I use a negative number like minus 1, the left hand side will simplify to 1 over 4, while the right hand side would simplify to minus 8, which is an error. And if x is 0, then the left hand side will simplify to 1, while the right hand side will simplify to 0, which again is an error. Now that we've limited the value of values of x to positive numbers greater than 0, another problem arises, which is what technique are we going to apply in order to find x? Because obviously we can't use logarithm here. I actually thought of using graph to solve the problem, but that would be time consuming, so we are going to solve it manually. If you look at this problem closely, you can safely say that the value or values of x should not be too large and why is it so? Of course, that's because as the value of x increases, the value of forest power x would be increasing at a very rapid pace compared to its x. And when I deduced this, I decided to make a table from 1 to 5 and then observe how the value of 4x and 8x changes for every increase in the value of x. So here's how the table looks like. x would be here, 4 is power x would be here, and 8x would be here. Now when x is 0, 4 is power x would be 1, and 8x would be 0. When x is 1, 4 is power x would be 4, and 8x would be 8. When x is 2, 4 is power x would be 16, and 8x would be 16. When x is 3, 4 is power x would be 64, and 8x would be 24. When x is 4, it, um, 4 raised to the power x would be 256 and 8x would be 32 and finally when x is 5 4 raised to the power x would be 1024 while 8x would be 40. Now I would like to say that it is purely by coincidence that we found a possible solution for x which is 2 because in some problems possible values of x would not be so easily found. But now that we have coincidentally found a possible value of x, how do we know if there are other solutions? Well, since we've already made the table, we can simply observe uh, to see if there are any clues. Now for numbers above 2, it is not possible to have a solution there because as you can see, above 2, the value of forest for x starts to increase very rapidly that it becomes impossible for x to catch up to it. And since we've eliminated the possibility of a solution greater than 2 being present, let's check for numbers ranging from 1 to 2. Now when x is 0, you can clearly see that the value of 4 is for x is greater than the value of 8x. But when x is 1, the value of 4 is for x now becomes less than the value of 8x. And what does this tell us? It tells us that there is indeed a solution between 0 and 1. Let me make use of something as an example to make it clear to those that still don't understand. Let's assume that for power x and 8x are two cars that are about to race and x being time. Now, when x as time is at 0, for power x will be at 1, y 8x will be at 0. And when x, again, which is time, is at 1 second, then uh, for power x will be at 4, y 8x will be at uh, eight. Now, if I allow everything to play smoothly, you see that there would be a time between 0 and 1 when forest power x and 8x would be equal to each other. This assumption is actually backed up by the fact that for positive values of x, which is what we are concentrating on, both 4x and 8x are continuous. That is, there would always be a real value for both 4x and sorry, 4 is power x and 8x. Okay, now we've known that there is a solution between 0 and 1. How do we solve for it? And um, here is actually where the formula is. But before I start solving, let me explain the approach I'm going to use because it involves elementary calculus. Now let's say that you have the graph of a particular function, you don't know the function, and you want to find the root of that function. 
as you know the root of a function is the value of x when the function is equal to zero if i don't know a conventional way of solving the function like maybe quadratic or cubic equations i could simply take a value of x which is close to the main root and whatever value of x i chose as my assumed root it must uh, have a corresponding output value which is y and at that point there must be a gradient that would strike the x axis at a certain distance from the assumed root but closer to the main root if we call our assumed root x0 and the point where the gradient strikes the x as x1 then the uh, distance between x0 and x1 will be denoted by dx which is a calculus notation for change in x and since x1 is more closer to the main root than x0 then we can safely say that x1 is a better approximation of the main root than x0 now since we are starting with x0 then we need to do x0 minus dx in order to get x1 but whenever we have this kind of problem we would only be giving the function and not dx so we need to find an expression for the x in terms of the function and from calculus we know that if y is a function of x then dy over the x is equal to f prime of x and if we make the x subject of formula we will have that the x is equal to dy over f prime of x our change in y should be placed here and since the two values of y that are separated by um, dy are y and 0 then that makes dy to become y because dy is equal to y2 minus y1 y2 here is y and y1 is 0 which simplifies to y i didn't replace the x with x because both x0 and x1 are values that we don't know now that i know that dy can be replaced with y i can now do that here and then replace the x here with y over f prime of x and to use this equation we will need to find x0 its corresponding value of y and the value of f prime of x at that point now we are set to solve this equation except that uh, there is one more thing we need to do and that is to subtract 8x from both sides of the equation so that the right hand side will be zero and why are we doing this remember that the method we are using to solve this problem is a method of finding the root of a function which is the value of x when the function is equal to zero the right hand side of this equation is not equal to zero so i'll just bring 8x over the equality sign to make it equal to zero and that makes sense because if we found the value of x for which this equation is equal to zero and substitute it in then these two terms should be equal to each other so that when we subtract they will cancel out to give zero now let's assume that y is equal to this whole equation and we'll just focus on this part the value of f prime of x at any value of x can be gotten by differentiating this equation and if we do that we get 4 raised to the power x times natural log of 4 minus 8x again i did not do anything mysterious just that when you differentiate a constant that has x as the power you get that constant raised to the power x times the natural log of that constant drops in my minus sign and if i differentiate a constant times x i'll just have that constant everything is straightforward now we just need to find the value uh, of this function at x0 but we haven't chosen what our x0 would be remember that x0 is a value of x that is close to the main root and since we've already seen that there should be uh, a solution between 0 and 1 it would make sense if we chose our x0 to be 0 0.5 and if we substitute it in uh, in the equation for f prime of x we have that the value of f prime of x when x is equal to 0 0.5 is minus 5.227 we solve up to an accuracy of three decimal places actually now the value of y when x is equal to 0 0.5 is minus 2 and if we substitute everything in the equation for x1 and solve we get that the value for x1 is 0 
117 which is a better root than uh, x0 now to find x2 which is a much more better solution than x1 we will just do the same thing we did to find x1 time to find an even better solution Now, since our second and third roots to three decimal places are equal to each other, we can safely conclude that the value of the roots to three decimal places is equal to 0 0.155. Now, for the problem we are solving, the two solutions we found are x is equal to 0 0.155 and x is equal to 2. And this is our only solution since there is no other solution when x is greater than 2 and also when x is between 1 and 2 these two functions we are just adjusting themselves to meet at x is equal to 2 okay here is the graph of 4 raised to power x and 8x just for you to see how it looks like on a consistent plane if you watched this video up to this point then you have learned at least two things from this video one is how to solve equations where the unknown value is put an exponent and a polynomial which means that you can now solve problems or equations of this form you can try any one of them or all of them if you want and then write the answers in the comments let me see and secondly you have learned how to use the newton raphson iterative method to solve equations i'll actually make a specific video for that in the future but if you enjoyed this video then please make sure to like and subscribe thanks for watching Merry Christmas in advance. I actually can't wait for that. Uh, bye bye.